and he's been putting in work. He's posted a number of workout videos, and you can just tell him looking at these that he looks like a different guy. What's up guys, Derek Moore, PlaySmartDates.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about Marquise Brown and a lot of you guys tagged me in this ESPN story, scary hours for opposing DBs. And basically, uh, apparently he added 23 pounds in two months, which is a pretty short time frame, obviously. And for the weight to be pretty lean, it makes you start to question things a bit. And this is, you know, why I was tagged, presumably. Apparently he ate Six clean meals and 4,000 calories per day this offseason and now weighs 180 pounds after leaving last season weighing just 157. So the first thing I wanted to see is how many of these articles were claiming that it was pure muscle versus just he gained 23 pounds because there's a difference between like you could literally have a cheat day and weigh in 24 hours later 10 pounds heavier than the day before or deplete yourself and lose another 10 pounds the opposite direction like 23 pounds lean doesn't necessarily mean actual contractile tissue accrual. So the claim is um, like the wording is actually pretty important because sometimes these claims are just, you know, you gain some weight. It doesn't mean it's actual like pure muscle. So a lot of these, they do just say added 23 pounds, not 23 pounds of muscle. Um, however, some of them do say muscle like foxnews.com. When Brown showed up to training camp last week, he had an additional 20 pounds of muscle and a can-do attitude. I feel I've got bright days ahead, he said. I feel 100 times better than I did last year. All I've got to do now is focus on plays instead of focusing on my feet and, and trying to stay healthy. So obviously, gaining size is important to him. And the thing is, is apparently he's still as fast, if not faster now at least according to these articles. He says, my first day of running, not even going top speed, I matched my highest speed since I've been on the Ravens, he said. I just had to make sure it was still there. Um, his ability to get downfield in a flash remains intact, even on his new formidable 180 pound frame. The speed is always going to be there, Sneed said. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I know he's healthy now, the foot is better. He's moving a lot better. Now it's just time to get on the field and proving that part. He looks like a totally different kid than I saw last year. I'm super excited to see what he can do. So he's gained 23 pounds in two months, supposedly. So we're gaining like, like a pound every two days, essentially, of lean weight and speed remaining the same. So it makes you sort of, you know, the red flags are going all, all over the fucking place right now, as you can imagine. Um, so I wanted to look at this actual diet because this is one of the things that, um, you know, you see top athletes all the time and all the people in my, that want to justify if a guy's natural or not, they always want to say, oh, they have the top trainers, they have the top diet, they have the top this, they have the top that. And it's like, oftentimes these top guys have celebrity coaches that are like dated out of the literature and still think you should be eating chicken, rice, and broccoli for every fucking meal. Getting up in the morning, having oatmeal and then a protein shake and then eating two hours later. I mean, I'm having to eat every two hours. Eating three big meals a day, not good. Your metabolism is slower. What you really would love to do in a perfect world is have six to eight small meals a day. A tub of tuna with, with vegetables and then chicken breasts with lettuce and then protein shake and then protein bars and it's like uh i'm eating drywall and um wood chips mostly and that's why these celebrities you know prepping for movies and stuff i don't know if like a celebrity you know uh hollywood trainer is going to be a uh, more uneducated than a uh nfl coach or nutritionist i would assume they'd be less educated but you know, million dollar actors are, you would think are going to get the same quality of trainers. And we've seen time and time again, that they're given the, you know, micronutrient deficient diet models that are just like, make no fucking sense. About a year and a half of like, like literally, you know, brown rice, grilled chicken, broccoli, a gallon and a half of water a day mm -hmm. and working out two to three times a day, six days a week for about a year and a half and wow. then your body will change. I wanted to see if this guy had something different because one of the, you know, the justifications for this guy's natural is, you know, he probably had access to the best diet, the best nutritionist. And it's like, 
you can only tell a guy how to eat so well and his micro and macronutrients like so much. There's only so much you can do. And oftentimes these guys are hit, missing the mark, which is interesting at high levels of sport and, you know, acting and whatnot um, with like top paid trainers. But so I looked at his diet model and he posted it. Um, or ESPN posted it. So 4,000 calorie diet. And it's not that bad, honestly. Like if you actually plug it into chronometer, you know, you hit pretty much all your micros. It's kind of a, you know, there could be more diversification. It's kind of bland. There's not a lot of variety in the uh, vegetables. It's all just like, there's like two servings of greens in the entire day. Um, it's no fruit or anything, but you know, it gets the job done. And like his breakfast, 7.30 AM, four boiled eggs and oatmeal. Um, snack, 9.30 a.m., protein shake and two tablespoons of peanut butter. Lunch, protein, steak, chicken, or lamb with rice, potatoes, and greens. Snack at 2 p.m., protein shake, 10 ounces of almond milk, one banana, and two tablespoons of peanut butter. 5 p.m. dinner, a protein, steak, chicken, or salmon with rice, potatoes, and greens. And then at 7.30 p.m., he has another protein shake, 10 ounces of almond milk, yogurt and two tablespoons of peanut butter. So um, if you plug this into chronometer, roughly what you're going to see is um, like, obviously some of this stuff I kind of just like ballparked, you know, like oatmeal, like that's, you know, that's vague. What is that? Like half a cup, a cup, two cups. Like what the fuck are we talking about here? So I just kind of ballpark based on general kind of go-to measurements. So for like the proteins, I put like, uh, you know, like a standard six ounce cooked portion um, and I proportionally decreased it for the chicken if it was weighed raw versus cooked. Um, oatmeal, one cup. Rice, I just assumed one cup. Um, and I plugged this all in and it came to roughly 3,689 calories. So a bit off the mark from his 4,000. So presumably somewhere in there, you know, he's either having a fattier cut of meat than I put in here or different portions of certain things. Like either way, it's kind of a ballpark though. And you, if you look at the micro nutrient breakdown and the mineral breakdown, um, you know, he's hitting all the marks, whereas oftentimes you'll see these, uh, top, uh, you know, top trainers giving out, uh, diet models that are missing tons of shit. And especially when you have a guy who is, uh, trying to gain as much muscle as possible and subjecting his body to, um, intense levels of physical stress on a, you know, regular basis, the micronutrient needs go up. Like these are simply the RDAs. They don't account for, you know, top pro athletes and their needs, which are obviously heightened. So the fact that he's, you know, several hundred percent over some of these RDAs, um, is probably a good thing. Um, the omega threes, he's deficient in, in this diet model only because I didn't plug in the fish, but he is having fish during some portions of the day. And he also didn't go over his supplementation in this diet model here. So presumably, you know, every couple days, like I'm sure he's swapping out. Sometimes he's having for that uh, dinner meal, either steak, chicken, or salmon. So, you know, I just put in the first uh, meat meal, I put steak in the second meat meal, I put chicken and presumably some other days he's having lamb and salmon instead. So, you know, probably getting his omega threes into and um, like, this isn't, this isn't the worst diet, man. Like I've seen, I've seen much fucking worse. Like this is going to get the job done. And obviously it seems to be working pretty well because he's gained 23 pounds lean in a short time frame, and this is what he looks like now. Pretty good physique, obviously, for a guy who isn't trying to be a bodybuilder, he's trying to maintain as athletic of a frame as possible, but pack on as much tissue that is uh, going to enhance his athletic abilities and his position specifically. So yeah, again, Hollywood ate six clean meals per day after leaving last season weighing 157 pounds. He returned for training camp sporting 180 pound physique. And it doesn't look like he's really gained a whole lot of fat. But you have to keep in mind too, just from like changing your diet model and going to something with a significantly higher amount of calorie, calories, a lot of the weight is just temporary weight from the increased volume, increased water retention, stuff like that. It's not just like pure you know, like dried out, like contractile tissue, like stage weight, as you'd call it for like a bodybuilder or something. So, but it does look like he gained a lot of muscle still, at least on paper. When you actually look at his physique though, it doesn't look a whole lot bigger than what he looked like in his past. Like if you dig into some of the, uh, his old physique pics. So this is him in 2017. Um, this is his arm. You can't see a whole lot. This is him in 2018, July 1st. And you know, Obviously he's bigger now. Is it 23 pounds of muscle bigger though? Probably not, man. Like he already looks good here. Six pack is in, you know, he's not big, he's not muscular, but he has like, he's not a rail. He has some muscle in his frame. 
going to uh, October 22nd, 2018. Physique, you know, still uh, like honestly about the same leanness as he is now in his current, uh, you know, updated pictures. But, you know, to me, this looks like about like 10 pounds of pure muscle off of where he is now. And this is more uh, somewhat recent, I guess, September. Well, it was actually almost two years ago, September 29th, 2018. Again, same level of body fat, pretty much just a lower body weight. Here he is. March 11th, 2019. This doesn't look that far off of what he is now, frankly. And then this, moving forward to more current, is the current physique. And to me, this July 7th update pick, where he is holding supposedly 20 pounds more muscle, according to Fox News, after two months, to me, this July 7th picture doesn't look a whole lot different than March 11th, 2019. So maybe he's packed on. 20 pounds on the scale, but how much of that is actual contractile tissue? Like I said, at most, maybe five to 10 pounds more. This doesn't look like a roided change, like it's being implied. Like I just don't see the slabs of tissue being added. If this guy gained 20 pounds of muscle, he would look unrecognizable. So, you know, maybe on the scale, he's 20 pounds heavier, but you know, it's not really reflected in his physique changes. He looks good though. He obviously gained some muscle, but it's not the amount being hyped up whatsoever so as far as this guy's natural or not we're gonna get into that so um some of the uh you know claims about what's going on are kind of uh exaggerated in my opinion people have a lot of high hopes for this guy he has tons of potential um and this guy wrote made a tweet about it that gained a bit of steam marquise brown gained 23 pounds in two months diet seems simple enough um, some of these articles are hyping up the diet so fucking much too. It's like Marquise Brown diet is mind blowing. And let's see, Marquise Hollywood Brown's dietary plan to gain weight is insane. Like to me, this doesn't look that insane. Like it's a decent amount of clean food to stomach for sure. And a lot of guys would actually have a hard time getting this down 4,000 calories on a regular basis of clean food and not like shit. Most people are content with three square meals per day, but Brown is just taking this to the next level with six eating appointments per day, even though he's calling three of them snacks. While it's safe to say <laughs> most doctors or nutritionists probably wouldn't recommend a 4,000 calorie diet as part of a lifestyle for eating clean, whatever works best for Brown and his plan to bulk up for the 2020 NFL season is going to be good. New typo for the Ravens, exclamation mark. Um, so according to this, let's see, David Hayes is not a fan dual employee, blah, 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 blah. Okay. I don't know. Is this a good, uh, a good site to be uh, referring to? I don't know. That has typos in it. And this guy is hyping this shit up a bit too much. Diet is mind blowing to me. This diet doesn't seem overly mind blowing. To be honest, it just seems like a pretty strict, you know, like clean model you would expect from somebody trying to bulk up without gaining ridiculous amounts of fat and going to McDonald's all the time. But again, looking at his chronometer, it's not the worst thing, man. Like I've seen much worse. Like this is definitely going to get the job done. And it is, um, some of the tweets about this guy, a more powerful, heavier, and still insanely fast Marquise Brown look out. And then, you know, some of the comments are, you would think a lot of this would be like Bryson DeChambeau, for example, got fucking uh, steamrolled for gaining the amount of weight he did in a short period of time. And some other guys, you know, don't really get away with it. But in the NFL, they don't seem to really like own in on this stuff and, uh, you know, pop the uh, steroid question that much. In some of the comments, though, it does get, uh, you know, some of the stuff is kind of funny. Like, this is what healthy people eat every day. Healthy people eat 4,000 calories a day. This guy basically goes into a... <laughs> an argument with this guy about what a normal diet is. Also a member of hashtag team sex. What? Brown's girlfriend would often greet him after workouts with the after workouts with a jar of peanut butter. This guy loves his peanut butter, dude. Like this is a lot. Two tablespoons of peanut butter in a snack, two tablespoons of peanut butter in a second snack, two tablespoons of peanut butter at nighttime. I'm just realizing how much fucking peanut butter this is. Ah, uh, man, marriage material. <laughs> No way he put on 23 pounds of lean muscle in eight weeks without help. That's roughly three pounds per week, meaning he needed to be roughly 10,000 calorie surplus per week, but only eating 4,000 calories per day. So like, again, this is obviously not permanent weight, which is kind of uh, why this number could even possibly be reached on the scale. And um, like feasibly, you could not gain 23 pounds of actual permanent weight whatsoever in this time frame. Like even even trying to gain that much fat in this time frame would be difficult. So I bet you this guy is just 
standing on the scale after his like full day of eating and he probably could take a shit and take a day of fasting and lose like 10 pounds of this 23. Weightlifters know 75% of that 23 pounds is a combination of water weight and fat fade. Yeah. Okay. So that's, this guy knows what's up. I don't know how much of it is fat, but a lot of it is, uh, you know, some of it's water for sure. And some of it is fat. Whey protein. He took whey protein. Nobody making five trips a day to the supermarket to cook for his ass during Corona lockdown. <laughs> Something tells me a random drug test is coming. <laughs> My man putting in the hard work. Not enough peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, man. Been, he been training with Bryson to Shambu? Ah, uh, that's a funny coincidence. Protein shake farts for days. Probably runs a 4.6 now. How far can he drive it? E-Clen Trent Hart. Yeah, so like a lot of... Some of the guys are getting to, you know, implying the gear. Some guys even fucking tied him in with Bryson to Shambu, which was pretty funny. But um, yeah, is this guy on gear? Um... Honestly, the physique transformation, like I said, it's not as uh, substantial as Bryson DeChambeau. It certainly doesn't look like 23 pounds of real weight. Um, but let's get into this. So this is what he's performing like now with apparently no changes whatsoever in his uh, performance. And if anything, he's just doing better now. So obviously his speed, still a, still a strong suit for him and the uh, added weight has not really hindered him at all. Um, and a lot of articles are being made about his transformation. They didn't see the real Marquise Brown inside the Ravens receivers offseason transformation. But again, man, like look at what he looks like here and like look at even like a year ago. Does this look substantially different to you guys? Like to me, it doesn't. Like I just don't see 23 pounds of lean weight even water retention weight like to me maybe he's gained like five to ten pounds of lean weight and how much of that is actual muscle i don't know a, f a handful of pounds maybe if he was lucky and here's live footage of that where that picture was taken presumably um where you can see some like uh actual uh footage of his physique in motion here he's obviously bigger than he was when he uh first started out but is it something that couldn't be achieved naturally like i would uh you know, it's definitely in the ballpark of natural, natural in my opinion. Bigger than we started, but not substantially bigger where it's, you know, 100% red flags are flying all over the fucking place of me saying this guy is on something. With that being said, though, the NFL has pretty light testing relative to other sports. So, like, compared to the UFC, for example, um, the NFL is far less vigorous. So, it gives you a lot more leeway in the NFL than, uh, you know, like other sports are not designed to help you get away with it, but they're certainly more lenient in giving you a uh, very transparent uh, time frames for being on, getting off, ensuring these, the pharmacokinetics are cleared out of your system in time of certain compounds. You know, you're not going to trip some uh, testosterone, epitestosterone, like bullshit screen, um, other things like that. Even just like detecting normal synthetic urinary metabolites like just understanding the pharmacokinetic profile of some of these drugs it's pretty easy to circumvent some of the tests some of these leagues have set up a lot of people are like oh professional sports it's you know it's all tested but it's <laughs> we actually dig into it dude it's like it's not that strict for some of these leagues like the nfl each week during the season which runs from september to february the NFLPA randomly selects 10 players per team to be tested for testing. So the specimens can be collected anytime during the week and the collection of blood specimens is prohibited on game days and a player cannot be asked for more than six blood tests um, per year. The thing is though, is they're collected at a training facility or a stadium and they have three hours to deliver it from the time they're notified. And on top of that, for specimens collected anywhere else, like their home, the player has to schedule a time for specimen collection within 24 hours of notification. It's not like the UFC where you literally have a doping control officer like watching the fucking athlete from the, from the notification time to the actual testing time, including literally standing there essentially like holding their dank while they like piss in a cup. The NFL is like a lot less regulated than that. So, and then one of the most obvious problems too is when 10 players have been tested from the team, Everyone else on the team knows nobody is going to be tested that week. So like <laughs> you kind of have a giant, uh, you know, like it's implied. No one actually says we're not going to test you, but it's like you already know, you know, that cap has been reached and now you're pretty much scot free for that entire time frame. So 
Like there's a lot of leeway here where uh, you could leverage very short acting compounds and even above and beyond that, you're not gonna get screened with a carbon isotope ratio test. You're gonna get screened with standard urinary metabolite testing, standard metabolite testing, and then a um, testosterone to epi testosterone ratio cutoff where you still have a leeway of like 250 plus milligrams of test before you trip that. And that's even using like a reasonably long ester, not even deploying something that's short that you could easily clear out of your system in time if needed and have a, you know, be essentially micro dosing on a continuous basis to consistently yield per performance enhancing effects out of it. And then on top of that, one of the main issues, we're well not issues, one of the main compounds that's deployed in the sport more commonly than is realized is human growth hormone. So it's not easy to test for like they already can't barely screen for fucking testosterone use and if they do it's only elaborate testing done after tripping a standard uh, cutoff ratio between testosterone and epi testosterone and basically like forcing themselves to be like oh fuck this guy tripped it so we got to test them further now and there's potential loopholes to that too but if ab above and beyond that hgh testing while it's uh you know proposed that it's uh you know there's positive tests for it like frankly no one's really getting popped for it and it's something heavily abused in sports and especially in the nfl for like why would you not use it when you pretty much know you can get away with it and it's one of the best things you can use for stimulating collagen synthesis and um tendons and skeletal muscle without pretty much any risk like it's one of the most effective recovery agents you could use and the performance enhancing benefits aren't as uh in a hypertrophy context aren't as powerful as you know anabolic steroids but for recovery and injury prevention and um joint and tendon integrity stuff like that this is all stuff that's going to be very important as a professional athlete where your longevity is essentially determined by how long you can stay injury free and how quickly you can recover so you know while uh this video is about marquise brown and if he's natural or not you know, I think the transformation he did, you could certainly argue that it is natural for sure. Um, and it doesn't look unnatural. Like to me, this doesn't look like 23 pounds gained. Like I would like to even fucking see the scale, to be honest. I would think after a couple days of not following a strict surplus, he would probably drop like 10 pounds of temporary weight, to be honest. So I think how much of this is actual lean weight is maybe like 10 to 15 pounds at most. And how much of this is actual contractile tissue, maybe like five pounds um certainly not anywhere close to the 20 that's being you know proposed by all these articles but it's like you know like even if you test positive in the nfl like what happens you get suspended for four four games apparently and you might get some like bad pub bad publicity a little bit and but then nothing really happens like this sport doesn't have a lot of uh you know eyes and ears on the people testing positive for peds like some of the most fucking saucy looking dudes like edelman Edelman, Edelman, how do I pronounce this guy's fucking name? Edelman, this guy is, uh, you know, one of the most jacked players, you know? Maybe no, maybe he's not one of the most jacked players, but he looks fucking good. You know, this guy shredded and he has a good amount of muscle tissue on him. And, you know, he popped for uh, performance enhancing drugs. And no one really glanced an eye at him, to be honest. Like, uh, he basically said, I am very sorry. I don't know what happened. Edelman said in a statement via his Instagram story last week. I've taken many, many tests, obviously, over the course of my career, and nothing like this has ever happened. Um, unlike under NFL policy, four-game suspensions are handed out to first-time violators who test positive for a stimulant or anabolic agent. Um, but since Edelman's test occurred in the offseason, that seems to rule out testing positive for a stimulant because offseason use of stimulants is dealt with under the substance abuse policy instead of the PED policy. And it was... <laughs> apparently the substance wasn't immediately recognizable and then people were just speculating as to what he took and it kind of just like <laughs> fell off the radar and like you know in the nfl no one seems to give a fuck to be honest about uh drug testing which is fine like who like i don't get i don't care i'd rather these guys be able to do whatever they need to do not have to worry about it um makes it more entertaining for me and for all you guys probably so you know maybe he tripped the testosterone to epi testosterone ratio but at the end of the day you get a little slap on the wrist with a four game suspension and the loophole is huge like you already like can pretty much gauge when you're going to be tested um even if you can't with 100 percent accuracy and you have at least you have some sort of horizon of clearance time that you know what you're using how to leverage the pharmacokinetic profile of it to clear it out of your system in time ensure it's short acting enough doesn't have residual metabolites to stay around for a long time and then even if you get tested you just go into it not worried at all because there's like no chance you're going to trip 
a four to one testosterone, epi testosterone ratio or a standard urinary metabolite screening. And you're just cranking some GH whenever you want pretty much because there's no way to accurately test for it. So, you know, I bet a lot of these guys are microdosing as well as using GH in the NFL. And I think it just goes overlooked and I don't think anyone cares to be honest. So, you know, is, uh, is Marquise Brown using? Like there's definitely a lot of uh, incentive for him to use some HGH probably, as well as to potentially microdose gear um, around the uh, testing windows or even during the time frame that you're not being tested. It sounds like there's a pretty big window of time that these guys just like really aren't even paid attention to when they're supposed to be tested or not. Like there's, <laughs> like there's a big window of time where you can pretty much get away with doing whatever you want. Like each week during the season is when the testing happens from September to February. And even then, you know, you're like limited to the 10 players per team to be tested. And then once they've been tested, you're, you're kind of like off the hook. So you have like this very predetermined window. You have a very vague, you know, like uh, a very narrow amount of players being selected. And then of those, you know, you have a window of time for more PED use, even after people even in your team have been tested and you know you're not going to be selected next and there's just like there's so many windows of opportunity and then you could just be blasting gh all the time too so you know i think it's uh is he on specifically i don't think he really needed much to do this transformation i think a lot of it is just temporary inflated weight so you know i'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say he's natural um i wouldn't be surprised though if he's on some gh and maybe he's microdosed some gear too. But I mean, I think a lot of the guys are mainly using the GH for the recovery aspect. And then if they can get away with anabolics and feel the risk to reward on it is good enough. That one, there's probably more, uh, you know, um, anxiety around using that because there's like, it's easier to pick up on a test. But I mean, if you know what you're doing with the chemistry here, it's kind of like, it's a no brainer to deploy these compounds in my opinion in the sport. So take from that what you will. Let me know what you guys think about, uh, Marquise Brown, like, what do you think of his uh, new physique? Do you think he gained even close to 23 pounds of muscle or 20 pounds of muscle, like Fox News said? How much do you think he gained? Um, what do you think he did? What do you think of his diet model? What do you think of, uh, is he natty or not? That's kind of the uh, the main question around this transformation. Um, I was more interested in what the <laughs> what the diet looked like when I plugged it into chronometer, though, to be honest. But I mean, uh, and by the way, if you want to see what your diet looks like, a lot of people, they always ask me when I do these videos, like, what's a good example of a muscle building diet that's not micronutrient deficient? If you want like an idiot proof example, go check out the vertical diet in the video description below. It is designed by Stan Efferding, a formerly the uh, world's strongest bodybuilder and this guy uh, basically designed a um, very easy to follow like newbie protocol for guys who just want to uh, hit the ground running and have a diet model that not only is optimized for gut health for pu putting on as much muscle as possible gaining as much strength as possible um, performance um, even sleep and recovery is addressed as well as thyroid health stuff like that and ensuring you're hitting all your micronutrients and like maxing out every possible avenue in the vitamins, minerals, um, electrolytes, just like everything you would need that would otherwise seem like overwhelming to somebody who otherwise would just do like, if it fits your macros or some dumb shit like that, I recommend you check out that diet. It's uh, like I said, it's in the description below for you guys to try. And if I was trying to gain muscle, um, that would be the diet model I'd be following, to be honest. Like, it's very, very good, and it's very newbie-friendly, in my opinion. Anyways, if you want to follow me on Instagram, at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to listen to audio instead of uh, burn through your data on YouTube, I recommend you get the uh, audio subscriptions um, or subscribe to the audio, iTunes, whatever I'm on, Spotify, etc. Um, subscribe, like, helps the algorithm when you guys comment, too. So please drop a comment if you... Uh, have any input or even just uh, the algorithm comments are always pretty entertaining, to be honest. They're kind of creative too. So um, let's see how many of those we can rack up. Um, as far as the other stuff uh, you can support the channel with, you can check out uh, my TRT clinic if you're interested in testosterone replacement therapy, hormone replacement therapy in any context. Obviously, these natty or not videos are kind of about um, performance enhancing drug use. Um, if you're somebody who otherwise wants to just uh, see if you have a medical need for TRT or would benefit it from it in some capacity for hormone optimization. You want a patient care coordinator and doctor who is qualified to actually uh, intelligently manage your protocol design and is uh, individually tailored for you based on the most up-to-date uh, clinical literature. So that is uh, where my clinic comes into play. We are uh, top in the nation for providing that level of service. We're not 
um, cookie cutter bullshit, giving you pretty much like a legal prescription for steroids. That's not what we do. We literally look at your individual blood work, make a uh, protocol designed just for you and your needs, regardless if you have high SHBG, low SHBG. Um, if you have uh, high estrogen, low estrogen, we don't just like throw you on cookie cutter, 200 milligrams of test and an AI. We literally look at even not only frequency of administration, type of uh, the way of administration, cream versus injection versus the frequency. Are you going to inject every day or do you need to microdose because you have low SHBG and you'd otherwise hyper excrete testosterone? Do you have high SHBG and you would otherwise benefit from bolus dosing where you can then drive it down and increase your free T because it's disproportionately low because your SHBG is too high. Frankly, 99.9% .9 of doctors just don't understand this stuff. So you would benefit from uh, finding somebody who, you know, actually stays up to date with the most cutting edge uh, medical literature on the subject and knows how to, uh, has hordes of experience with managing clients and getting them to high levels of quality of life, health, optimization, et cetera. So, you know, they reflect the level of content I put out in my videos and I recommend you reach out to them if that interests you at all. Um, you can save $50 off your first treatment with the coupon code MPMD50. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home, Skype, FaceTime, Zoom. You don't even have to leave the house to go see a doctor. It's all from your house, which is the way of the future in my opinion. All the meds are shipped right to your door. Um, if you wanna support Gorilla Mind, Gorilla Mode, my turnkey nootropic formulas for focus, productivity, creativity, etc. Staying locked in for more hours throughout the day. You can check those out. If you want to support the pre-workouts, just go check out, uh, literally pull out your pre-workout right now. Look at the label compared to the label on Gorilla Mode Classic. This is the hybrid formula with all of the uh, NO precursors, hyperhydrating agents, plasma expanders, and the potent stimulant and nootropic complex if you want to compare it to gorilla mode nitric or stimulant free formula with the max efficacious dose of the no precursors hyperhydrating agents etc but with no stimulants whatsoever so you can use it at night time um if you're stimulant averse you simply just you know you're trying to take a break from caffeine or you just want the maxed out dosage of all of these uh, other performance ingredients then the stimulant free formula and then if you just want a cost effect of uh kind of a cognitive blend. This is a uh, Gorilla Mode Stim, the cognitive enhancing component of Gorilla Mode basically increased to an even more substantial degree, but without any of the uh, pump products, this formula would be for you at a more cost-effective price point if that's what you're looking for. Any of these formulas, honestly, they're top of the industry. And this is why I always say, just compare your label to ours because it's pretty transparent why you would want to switch, in my opinion, if you haven't already. So check those out. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.